There is no peace to the wicked, so here I am on the first Tour de France race day providing some additional content for you to presumably watch on the toilet. We're going to go through and look at who is the winner of the first week of the Tour de France. What a heretical Australian concept. But first, let's have a quick recap of the nine winners of the first stages. Alaphilippe, the punchy stage one. Van der Poel taking yellow emotionally on Murder Britannia. Then Merlier, the crash mild stage three, winning that sprint. Caleb Ewan crashing out. Then Cavendish winning the pure bunch sprint in stage four with Merlier not contesting it. Pagacha, the big upset on stage five in the time trial ahead of Stefan Kuhn. Cavendish again on stage six. Quickstep's third win for the week. Then stages seven and eight won by Morich and turns both Bahrain riders in the breakaway for Ben O'Connor yesterday for Azure Desert Citroen, the Australian winning that difficult wet mountain stage. But the most important message from this first week of the Tour de France is you need to subscribe to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel down below and like this video or this cursed image is going to visit you tomorrow morning. But before we get to the obvious in quick step, Alpacin and Tare Pagacha, I want to look at first Ida Schelling, and I always look at the Tour de France and I think, where could you get the most exposure for the least amount spent, say, on the salary of a rider? And Ida Schelling, I doubt very much he's on 500k plus. Whereas to get the green jersey or the yellow jersey, you've got to be named Alaphilippe or Mathieu van der Poel. And so Schelling was able to wear the polka dots for six days straight by cleaning up primarily Cat 4 and Cat 3 KOM point sprints where they give one point or two points at the most. And it seemed he had a plan going into the tour. He executed that plan. He got into the breaks he needed to, beating Perez for those sprints. And he got to wear it for six days. Every day he's on the podium after the stage. Every morning before the stage, he's doing the presentation and he's in the front row when they start the neutral zone. Huge exposure for him and I still think Polkadot's first week of the tour is a great way to get exposure. If a, if a solid rider like him who was good in the Ardennes, fifth at Brabant Chapelle or fourth, if they really target it, it can be a massive win for the team. So he's my first contender for a winner. Next is obviously Quick Step. They had a plan as well. Stage one, they were going to absolutely drill it up the final climb. They did that with three Stavidens. They set off Alifal leap from pretty far actually on the steepest section he was able to go solo winning both the stage and the yellow jersey on the first stage mission accomplished for him now his gc dream has pretty has died he's probably going to go on breakaways we'll look at him in stage 14 he could be a big contender for that stage but cavendish has been the revelation they brought him instead of bennett apparently training preparation interrupted all the bennett lefebvre cavendish drama playing out he's won two stages now a lot of fortuitous circumstances with Ewan crashing out with Merlier, not contesting both of those sprints, etc. But still, three stage wins, yellow jersey, quick step were a winner in week one of this year's tour. And here's the most obvious one, but not my pick as the winner for the first week. Tadej Pogacar won the TT. He then attacked on stage eight, the Grand Bonin stage, put like three minutes plus into all the other GC contenders. He pretty much rode away without the other GC contenders even trying to get back to his wheel on the stage yesterday because they're already mentally checked into fighting for the podium instead of the win. So barring a crash, sickness, or some bizarre circumstances, Pagacha already with a five minute gap on the first rest day is a win for him and UAE Team Emirates. But my pick for the team that won the first week of this year's tour has to be Alperson Phoenix. Six days in the yellow jersey with their most high profile rider, Mathieu van der Poel. We've got him not winning stage one where I thought he was gonna go better than Alaphilippe and then Alaphilippe would have the advantage on Murder Britannia. He then has to attack on the first ascent of the Murder Britannia to gain time, the bonus seconds that were available. And then he attacks a second time, drops everybody off his wheel, goes solo, takes enough time on the road plus all the bonus seconds to go into the GC lead by I think eight seconds ahead of Alaphilippe. And then we're thinking, okay, he'll keep it for two, three days and then either Pagacha, Alaphilippe or Wavanaut will take it off him after the stage five TT gets Cameron Wirth's wheels shipped to him and does the time trial of his life in that unbranded helmet. And then he was able to keep the jersey for another three days. So we've got the stage win for him, the six days in yellow, plus Tim Merlier winning the stage in stage three, the crash marred stage as well. So for a pro Conti team, that Alpes and Phoenix are, they're not a world tour level team. To receive that much exposure, be at the forefront that much in the first week of the Tour de France is incredible. And it's prompted me to write down for a video idea in the off season, is it really worth 
being a world tour team when you can just pay a superstar, be a pro Conti team, get invited to all the top races that you'd want to go to anyway. And then leave after nine stages, no one really says anything and the organizers say thank you for coming and making the event special. There's also a lot of luck that plays into these results, a few things going their way, Morich attacks, no one chases him, on stage seven, they give him a minute lead and then it's too much to bring back at the end. Everyone attacks MVP, MVP and Wow Van Aert. And there's bad luck. Jumbo Visma, most of the crashes were not their fault at all. The crash that was seen around the world, the fan hitting Tony Mark with the sign. Geraint Thomas just falling down in front of Robert Hersink for no apparent reason, crashing him out of the Tour de France. Jonas Vingegaard, Bill Bow on clips. He crashes. He's crashed like three times. So Jumbo Visma with Roglic now abandoning have been super unlucky. I'll be keen to see what their goals are for the rest of the season. But I'm always giving out predictions. I want to see your predictions down below. Write down who is winning each of the next six stages in week two. Who are your picks? Is it going to be a sprint on the sprint days or could a break get away when we've got teams like FDJ with no Demar, now with Stefan Kuhn maybe going in the break, and of course, Brent van Moer de Hent for Lotto Sudar without Caleb Ewan. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it down below if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.